Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at the Bowdoin Kizaritsky Gambit, which is a really fun and interesting gambit that you can play with the white pieces. That is essentially a Stafford Gambit in reverse. That's right, you can play the Stafford Gambit with the white pieces, which means you are already a tempo up. And therefore, it is definitely better than the Stafford, but don't worry, even this, a tempo up, is still a very dubious opening. So I think that you will like this. And honestly, the reason that I'm bringing this up today, we have to get into it, is because I am going to be addressing the controversy in this video because earlier today I put a video out on the Vampire Chicken channel which if you don't know that's my gaming channel where I post me playing Blitz games but also a lot of other games that I like to play and on there I may have started a series earlier today where I am attempting to play every single gambit it's called the Holy Gambit Grail and I am attempting to do a 766 part series on every single gambit that you can possibly play and obviously the very first one that I picked was the Bowden Kizaritsky gambits but yet the game game that I played and claimed that I won a game with was maybe not a Bowdoin Kizaritsky. It's important to know a lot of these little details and I'm going to explain everything in this video. So first, we're going to cover all of the main basic traps that you might see if you do play this opening. Second, addressing the controversy and looking at an opening that is not the Bowdoin Kizaritsky Gambit and then maybe we'll come up with an action plan on what I need to do next and we will figure it out together. But first, we need to know what the heck is the Bowdoin Kizaritsky Gambit. It is an E4, E5 opening. And after knight f3, knight f6, this is the way that you typically reach the Bowdoin Kizaritsky Gambit through the Petrov move order. Now, what's kind of curious about this is that Black is potentially hoping to play a Stafford Gambit themselves. If you're going up against another Gambiteer, they may be hoping for Knight takes, and after Knight c6, they want to play a Stafford Gambit. So this is Black playing the Stafford Gambit. Take note of how this bishop has not yet come out to c5. Well, if you want to play the Bowdoin Kizaritsky Gambit, you can do kind of a similar thing. You get to the Petrov, but from this position, you play bishop to c4. This is the Italian variation. And if black now decides to take this guy, you can play knight to c3. Bowdoin Kizaritsky Gambit, and you're letting black take here in order to take back and get that same structure, only white, having moved first, has already snuck this bishop out to c4, which definitely is a huge achievement because there are so many tactical opportunities that this bishop might have. It's pointing right at that f7 pawn, so there's going to potentially be a lot of differences, and in fact, most people with the black pieces make one of two very common mistakes in this position. So already there's a huge chance that if your opponent doesn't know what they're doing, they will not be able to find the absolute best move here. And I'll tell you what it is. The best move here is pawn to f6. And this is not an easy move for people to play because it may feel or look wrong in many ways. But any other move that protects this pawn, which we are attacking with our knight on f3, is going to lead to a lot of trouble for black. Like, for example, you could play pawn to d6. The other move that you could potentially play is knight to c6. These are the two logical, normal-looking moves that could potentially defend this pawn. However, they both fail for the same exact reason. And the reason is, we can get an attack on f7 way too quickly. And it starts with the move knight to g5 and now we already have this beautiful coordination and if you've ever played the italian game you know that these knights and bishops you think of the fried liver you can think of a lot of other openings where this can be potentially very dangerous but here black doesn't have any meaningful way to be able to defend the pawn the best that black is going to be able to come up with is to play a move like bishop to e6 and black is hoping at this moment that they're just giving back the pawn maybe uh, okay they're just gonna take after i take back white is going to maybe recapture but think again because we are actually going to be playing a much better move here. And that move is queen to f3. This is the sneaky move that just wins on the spot for white because you're not only threatening to just bring your queen in, but if you somehow defend it against that, we are also threatening to come and take this b7 pawn. And now this rook is falling and the entire black position just completely falls apart. And that's something that has happened many, many times in the database. So that is definitely worth keeping in mind if you decide to play this variation. Now, the other natural way that black can play instead of d6, is of course to play knight to c6. And this fails yet again for the same very reason. We are going to be playing knight to g5. This, however, does give uh, a potential for something a little bit funnier. So black hasn't wasted time uh, playing d6 yet, but they also can't get their bishop out yet to be able to defend against this. So maybe they will be playing something like pawn to d5. This is getting even worse for black because now after we take... They had to give up a pawn just to get to this position, but here we are going to be able to absolutely destroy them. We can take on e6, and when they take back, we can deliver this check first, and after here, we can take this with check, 
And look at this pawn structure. We take back here, we're attacking this pawn, we're attacking this rook, and black's position is just completely destroyed. And that's why opponents have to come up with something peculiar and awkward and something that you're not going to come up with unless you know. But what happens if you go up against somebody that knows what they're doing? If they know what they're doing, they're going to be playing pawn to f6. And when you first kind of see this, it maybe looks like white has some sort of trap here. A lot of openings, if you think of the Damiano defense, for example, you can imagine when pawn comes to f6, knight takes e5. Well, here this is not not a trick that white should be doing. This is actually losing for white because black can very clearly take this. And if you deliver this check thinking that you're very clever, they're going to play g6, you're going to take back and you're going to be able to win the rook. Turns out, ugh, drawing arrows is hard. Turns out the joke is on you because queen to e7 and black pins the queen. And so, uh oh, this would be a huge mistake that it's white that actually needs to avoid. So instead, we come back to this position. They play pawn to f6. How is white going to be able to get some sort of initiative or find some sort of way to potentially get this queen in, which is what you want to do in this structure. You want to play queen h5, but your knight's in the way and you can't sacrifice it. Well, many have tried playing knight to h4. The idea is you're being able to bring this queen all the way into h5. Here, the best move for black is pawn to g6, which simply prevents that idea. But white doesn't stop there. White has a very aggressive plan that they can use to potentially put even more pressure on g6. And the way to do it is with pawn to f4, just trying to rip open the position before black can really get anything going. And typically, uh, queen to e7 is what is getting played, but now we play f5, continuing to put pressure on this pawn. And what you're hoping for is that the pawn will move. So what black needs to do is play a relatively awkward move, queen to g7, in order to keep all of this together. However, a lot of players will play pawn to g5, but this is exactly what white has been fishing for. Because now if you can get this pawn to move, you always have queen to h5. And what's even better is that after the king moves... You have knight to g6, and you're able to exploit this pin. Ugh, so hard to draw arrows these days. Exploiting this pin, delivering this fork, and this is just winning for white. Now, there's one last trick that maybe black can try. They can pin you this way, and the computer here will recommend bishop e2 and a bunch of, like, crazy nonsense. Simple enough is dropping the queen all the way back to h3, and suddenly you're going to be winning the rook in the corner. We are attacking it. Doesn't matter if you take us, we're going to be able to attack it. And even this bishop is doing an awesome job keeping that rook from being able to move over to the g8 square. So this is how we would win in this particular variation. However, after f6, black's best try, black can, of course, play a little bit better. So the best objective way, and this is why this opening is a little bit dubious, because if your opponents find g6, and after f4, they find queen to e7, and after f5, they find queen to g7. So far, they've just been moving pawns in their queen throughout this whole game. But if they can get to here, then they actually have a pleasant position. And I'll just leave you with just kind of one idea that you might want to consider here. You can take on g6 if you end up here and play queen to g4. And you're attacking this guy. You're keeping this pin all on this uh, diagonal that the bishop's on. So they have to come up with uncomfortable moves like king moving over. And if black can continue to find a series of moves, then good for them. In the meantime, we're trying to develop and get castled and get some sort of initiative. And it's better for black, but those that like to attack, I think, are still going to have a fun time here. But anyways, that is the Bowden Kizaritsky Gambit. But do you know what is not the Bowden Kizaritsky Gambit? What I played on my Holy Gambit Grail series that I just started, episode one of 766, and already it, it's off to a bad start because I played a game... And the way that it works is a viewer tells me what gambit they want me to play, and then I analyze it, and then I play it in the pool, and I try to play a blitz game and win a game. That's the idea of the series until we've played every single gambit in the entire world. But uh, in our game, something different happened because we got to this position, and I had an opponent that played knight to c6, and I played what I thought was the Bowden Kizaritsky Gambit. And I said, oh, okay, I know how to get back to what we just did. I have a very clever idea. I'll still play this move. But after the knight comes out to f6, I will very cleverly play knight to c3. And my idea was that my opponent would probably go here and play for the fork trick. The idea behind black's move is that they didn't blunder a knight just now, but they know that after I take back, they have this resource pawn to d5, and this is how they typically 
uh, get the piece back. Well, I in this position decided, okay, no worries, I will castle. And after my opponent took, I took back, and I was very excited. I said, yes, this is it, the Bowden Kizaritsky Gambits. But obviously, this is not the Bowden Kizaritsky Gambits because I have castled and the opponent has played knight to c6. And while it doesn't seem to make that big of a difference, while I can still try to play the same way, this actually makes a huge difference, and this is way more dubious for white. Now, you probably love gambits if you clicked on this video. You can definitely try this, and it's definitely like wild, but be careful because this is something very different. And the major difference here uh, is that if they play f6, for example, which is still the best move, knight to h4 followed by f4 has a little bit of a different twist. g6, they can continue to play the same, but if you play f4, the queen, well, first of all, f5 is a very strong move for black that I just want to address and put on the radar that this alone is very good for black. The idea that is if you go here and they intend on taking back, allowing, or, you know, with the, your idea is that we're going to take here. Sorry, I just got distracted. Somebody just came home. Um, if you take back, we want to deliver this check and that would be very good for us. Well, instead of doing that, black can just simply play pawn to d5, attacking our bishop. And if our bishop moves, they can take our knights and black wins a lot of material. So f5 is one very big problem. But even if black decides to play queen to e7, we will now notice the huge difference that has been made by the fact that our king is now on g1 instead of e1. Because if we play pawn to f5 here, we are in a lot of trouble. And this is kind of a, a surprising twist because now queen to c5 just simply picks up the bishop. So this is not the same gambit. So this is something totally different. Now white can play this way. You can still do this if you want. Um, uh, there's a couple games in the database. There's still two master games that feature king to h1. Maybe bishop to d5 is some sort of stockfish improvement um, that you could consider. But if things go the same way, um, I think like if d6, you can now try playing something like this. The queen will eventually go here, never playing g5. If ever g5, there's always fun stuff that you can do. In this exact position, you can take this way and then push this guy. You can see how we're kind of knocking them all around. Then give this check, then this guy comes in. I mean, it's, it's a lot of the same fun stuff and this is just very powerful for white. But if you have an opponent that actually knows what they're doing, they put the king on g7, you can play bishop to e4, you can continue and you are down a pawn. The computer is not impressed at all. You probably actually would prefer to be castled on the queen side if you were playing this position as white, but you can live your life and you can do it. But I wanted to point it out because this is something that you also might want to get into. But what am I going to do? I started a whole series called the Holy Gambit Grail. I said I was going to be playing every single gambit. Episode one, I tried to play the Bowden Kizaritsky Gambits and I don't know what to do. I think all I can really do is try to make things right next Sunday, which is when I always do the Holy Gambit Grails on Twitch. So hopefully you come and watch me. We can address the controversy more. If you got anything else you want to say, let me know in the comments below. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But please subscribe. Bye.